Y'all mean to tell me y'all got power stations in the box? How dare you? How dare you? What up? I'm I from Ask God Solo, where I like to keep solar simple. Ain't no need to complicate it. Let's just get right into it. I want to give you guys some tips and tricks for getting the best out of your solar power setup, right? I'm making this video because when I was first getting into solar, I wanted to find a tips and tricks video, but I couldn't find one. I wanted to be able to maximize solar input, maximize solar output more than anything, and just be smart about how I use my devices. You gotta, I mean, this was kind of obvious, but you gotta take it out of the box, man. There's no reason, no real reason to not be using this portable power station that you bought or these solar panels that you invested your money in. You should absolutely pull it out of the box. You should absolutely start to charge it. And you should absolutely start to use it, whether it's just powering your internet, powering your TV or entertainment, anything you can use it for, charging cell phones, running a lamp, that type of stuff when you use it. If you should have an outage, then that stuff will keep going. And then you also do yourself the favor of getting familiar with your devices before stuff happens, before your power goes out. So I would say take it out of the closet, take it out of the box and start putting that thing to use, right? Once you have it out of the box, you may want to change up when you do things during the day. I try to do as many things as possible during sun hours. What I mean by that, let me give you an example. Well, this is one example of what I don't do because it just doesn't jive with us, but I would like to change it. My kids get screen time kind of around 730 for about an hour or so, maybe 90 minutes. They watch TV, they all play the game and stuff like that. And I really want to be able to kind of move that to sun hours <laughs> so that all of that can be powered off solar. Don't get me wrong, because I use my power stations, it is powered off of solar, but then it's powered off of the battery. I love pass-through charging, pass-through charging, which is essentially when you can power something and discharge it at the same time. It's not really pass-through charging, but we'll get away from that. I would love to have them using that power when the sun is out because that's most ideal. I run my internet from my solar. We watch TV from my solar. I run lamps if we need to from solar. I do as much things from solar as I can within reason. I'll put my deep freezer on solar, my refrigerator, my mini fridge, not my big refrigerator. I run my laptop and monitor and all sorts of stuff off of solar. But this also goes for people who have panels on their house, a larger solar system. Maybe you run your dishwasher during the day. Maybe you blow dry your hair during the day. I mean, using heat is a different thing, even though low uses a certain amount of power, so you can kind of manage that. But use your power, shift things during the sun hours so that you're not paying for electricity to do those things at night or you're not eating into your battery reserve to do things at night. We've already established that your power station is out of the box. <laughs> so what you wanna do is when you're charging up your device, if you're not somebody who wants to like micromanage it and all that jazz, that's cool. Charge it when it gets to about 80%, then you start powering stuff. Because what we want to do for the most part, if you're not like a pass-through junkie like me, you want to be able to have power when the sun goes down. So when a device gets to about 80%, that's a good percentage amount to have in the battery. You going above 80%, it's kind of like just kind of like topping it off. I'm not an electrician or an engineer or anything like that, but I've heard that that last 20% of charging a battery is a little harder, but be that as it may, when it gets to 80%, start using it. Plug up your cell phones, charge your laptop, run your TV, uh, you know, all of these things we have around the house. I can't think of anything because we don't have a lot of stuff, but you know, turn your lamp on, you know what I mean? You, you, you're good to go. 80% is a good thing. And if you have like, let's just say hypothetically, you have about 75 watts coming in from a 100 watt panel, you get to 80%, start using like 30, 40 of those watts if you're not using them already. So you get to 80%, that's a good amount. Actually, any amount, whatever amount you feel comfortable with, but 80% is good. So you start drawing on some of that pass-through power. And then when the sun goes down, you can kind of stop powering those things and you still have 80%. And if you're lucky, if you're not using the absolute maximum amount of input that's coming in, then you're stacking and slowly charging that battery a little higher as you go anyway. It's a good idea, 80% start charging your stuff. I also want you guys to understand, this is kind of simple, but maybe it's a foreign concept. When something is using power, it's showing that it's using that wattage draw. 
I talked about this in my beginner video. My solar panels are power stations for beginners. If it says it's using 60 watts, that means it's going to use 60 watts for the whole hour. The thing that you need to be mindful as it relates to that is if you use something for half an hour, then it only use 30 watts. If you use something for 15 minutes, it only use 15 watts. So keep that in mind. And it's the same thing for when power is coming in. You see your power station pulling in 75 watts of power. It's not pulling that power in right at the moment. It's going to pull that power in if the conditions stay the same for the whole hour. Think about it for something that's larger, right? Let's say you have a 5,000 BTU air conditioner. Typically, they'll use about 10% of that rating. I got that tip from Minuteman Prep, shout out to him. You'll be using about 500 some odd watts, maybe a little more. But if you only run that AC for a half hour just to cool off a small room that you happen to be in, then you're pretty much golden. You've only used 250 watts of your battery capacity. That's a lot more manageable than having to use the full 500 some odd watts over the full course of, course of an hour. So keep that in mind that if you don't use it for the full hour, you haven't used all of that power that it's rated at. Good to go. The next thing is when it gets full or maybe past that 80%, if you have more than one power station, start power dumping from that power station into the other power station so that you can keep getting that power, right? Because if you're in a situation where your power station is pulling in any amount of watts and it gets full at whatever time it gets full and you have more sun hours left, then you're just losing out on power. So if you have, let's say, uh, EcoFlow Pro, which can take in 700 and some odd watts of power, that thing can pull in up to 200 watts of power. It's not going to take that long to fill it up. It may take about a whole day, but if you get towards the end of that day and that thing is full, use that USB-C, take it, and start dumping power into another power station. You could even start dumping power into power banks, cell phones, your laptop, anything. It's the same principle as using that power when you start to get to a higher capacity. Save that power. You have more power for later. I hate a full power station. It's a good feeling to have a full one, but if there's more sun out there to be had, then I want to have it. I daisy chain my power stations to each other all the time in order to make sure that I'm getting all the power that I can. I power dump all the time. Some of us, including myself, have the potential to want to hoard power. So you want to get your devices charged up. You want them to be at 100% and that's all fine and dandy. But here's a little tip for you. If you do get it to 100%, so be mindful of this. Check your weather, right? If you know today is a uh, overcast day and you have about a thousand watt hours of power in your power station, or let's just say your power station is full, you don't really want to use that because something may happen. But if tomorrow is going to be a sunny day, then go ahead and rock out. I mean, don't deplete it all together, but if you know you can get that power back tomorrow, then that's a good reason to go ahead and power your internet throughout the night. Go ahead and watch your TV off of your power station because tomorrow you can get that power right back. And if you implement some of the previous tips, then you know how to smartly use that power throughout the day to maximize that usage. So this tip is as it relates to solar panels, right? We want to be able to angle our panels towards the sun, uh, but I don't want you guys to get caught up in trying to catch the perfect angle. The difference between perfection and being slightly off by some degrees can sometimes be as little as like 5 to 10 watts, 7 watts, 12 watts. Keep in mind that that's watts per hour. So if you're getting 65 watts and you get it at that perfect angle throughout the day and that bumps it up to 72 watts, you're only getting an extra seven watts for that work. Angle your panels properly, but then just let them chill for a while. If it goes down from 65 to 60 over the course of an hour, then you've only lost five watts of power, right? So let, let's relax a little bit. Let, let's, let's relax. Maybe go adjust them a few times a day to make sure you're not missing out on the full scale of the sun. Because when you start to get into drastic degrees, then you're, it can drop drastically, right? But other than that, just relax a little bit. Just, just relax. There are people out there who like to build things for their panels and your know, wood frames, PVC things. I'm all for that. I mean, I approve of that. I'm not for it. I don't want to do it, any of that. I just lean my panels against stuff. I will use a chair. <laughs> I'll use a garbage can. I'll use my wall. I'll lean it up against a fence. Whatever you need to do to get your, your solar panels angled, just do that. You don't have to go out and buy anything fancy. 
you don't have to build anything. I mean, you may want to, but you may not have to. I lean them up on some cinder blocks, some bricks. Uh, I have containers that my wife no longer uses, not household containers, but you know, like little carry containers for stuff outside or basket type of stuff. I will lean a panel on anything. I got something, a computer chair with the flat um, adjustable thing and the back is broken off. My neighbor was going to throw it out. I was like, man, give me that. I'll put a panel right on top of that. Someone did warn me that you need to be mindful of the pressure, pressure of the panel, but those panels are not necessarily heavy. So I'm not necessarily concerned about that, but that's something to be mindful of. Use whatever you have to get this power. As long as it's angled decently at the sun, I'm all about it. This tip is as it relates to charging from the AC. I don't do a whole lot of charging of my power stations from AC, but it can also apply to devices that you have being charged on your portable power station within reason. But here's the thing. A viewer of my Dennis mentioned that he uses his devices with smart adapters. You don't even have to have smart adapters really, but I'll get into that in a second. So there's these things that plug into an outlet that you can control from your phone. They even like non-networked ones that you can just have a switch how that benefits you let's say you have the ecofold or the eb70 or whatever if you're used to charging it from ac and you don't want to the ecofold is a really good example right because it has the ability to charge from the ac directly from the wall no power brick no anything and it also has a different port for charging from solar right so what you can do is you could take that smart plug plug your ecoflow into the wall and then turn off its AC power during the day when you're charging from solar. And when solar is done for the day and you're about to run out of that power and you want to charge it back up and use AC for charging. Remember, I don't do that a whole lot, but if you watch my last lobby, I kind of get into it a little bit now. Then as soon as seven comes, six comes, you can just use that smart outlet, turn that outlet back on and then it can start to charge. It's a good time. You can also use that approach on devices that you want to power. It just depends on your specific situation. But if you want something to come on, specifically if something has a hard switch, not a button switch, you need something that has like a light switch type of thing that's always in the on position, like some fans. You may have a fan that you want to connect into a smart outlet to be able to turn that fan on or a, a, a lamp. You could do that too. Leave the lamp in the on position, put a smart switch on it. You're coming into the house, you could turn that thing on. You could also do that with the EcoFlow app itself, but that turns on all the outlets. So that could work out too. You don't, maybe you don't have to have a smart switch, but it's just something to think about to kind of help your workflow be a little more manageable and user friendly, right? Another thing to get the most out of your power stations and your solar panels and the power overall is you may have to upgrade some devices. Now, I'm not saying go out and buy a new TV or a new refrigerator because it's gonna use less power. I think the smart thing to do is to be mindful of when your devices are ready to be replaced, then get something that's Energy Star rated or whatever it is so that it uses less power. I used to have a situation where we had a TV that was free. It was using 150 watts. It's like, it was a struggle. And I was so happy when that thing died. It was kind of like on the cusp of me getting into solar and kind of figuring out how much power it used. But I bought a TCL 55, a 50 inch TV that uses about 80 watts on high, 35 watts after I tweak the settings. I have a video, a couple videos about me talking about these TCL TVs. I'll link them up top so you could check them out. But yeah, you may want to get into replacing your light bulbs. You may want to think about, you know, getting a more power or energy efficient TV. You may want to try and use something other than your TV to watch TV. If you're into Netflix or whatever, maybe you use your laptop. Your laptop has a battery inside of it. This is all about being like smart about getting the things done that you need to get done, being entertained, being productive, whatever it is, without burning through a whole lot of power. It doesn't save you a whole lot of money to do these things, but being smart is being smart. I like to say I'm saving pennies, but they're my pennies. I actually have a video that you guys can check out where I was being truthful about solar and if solar can save you money on your bill. It's not a whole lot, but it's interesting because what happens is when you start to be smart about solar, when you start to be smart about your electricity usage, not only are you saving money with having solar itself, but you're saving money by adjusting your habits. Another tip you can implement is this idea that all of these power usage things can be transactional, right? You have in your kitchen, maybe you have a 
three light bulbs in there that use about 15 watts a piece. Turn that light off if you're not in there and then you've kind of recouped 45 watts of power for the hour, right? Then you could go over to your TV, like I turned that kitchen light off, go watch my TV, it's using 50 watts. I've kind of balanced things out. You don't leave lights on upstairs. You don't leave things running that don't need to be running. It's all, I look at it a lot, it's, it's kind of transactional. I can earn more power usage by turning something off. And this doesn't cost you anything, you know, you just, just turn the light off. Unplug your laptop from charging. Only charge your laptop on solar. Only watch TV on solar. I mean, you know, give or take. If you watch a whole lot of TV, that might be a problem. But we don't, it works out for me. So I'm always mindful of those things. You can be mindful of those things too. Let me know what kind of tips and tricks that you guys deploy to be smart about your solar power. Put them down in the comments. I look forward to it because I'm always looking for a way to be more efficient and more effective in everything that I do. It is I, Holla.